All right, welcome back everyone to this series where I'm going to be covering the character movement component in depth. In this video, we're going to be covering crouching and how to implement it in your custom CMC. Now, crouching is actually a feature that's already built into the character movement component. So we're just going to show you how to um, expose this feature and use it in your project. And I'm also going to show you how to make the camera transition smoothly because as we'll see, the default character movement component does not transition the camera at all. So let's get into it. So how exactly is crouching built into the default character movement component? Well, to find this out, let's explore the get compressed flags function. And specifically, let's explore this flags enum. So if you can see here, there was these flags from last time that we talked about. Um, and these were all reserved by the engine, and these were the ones we're allowed to use. And one of them you'll see here is wants to crouch. So as you probably figured out, we are going to want to change this flag, and this will automatically be replicated to the server, and the crouching will be all synced up. And the character move component automatically handles the actual implementation of what this flag means to the actual capsule. So we can't just directly set this, however, because the engine actually handles this. So if we go back to uh, here, we can see if we look at the super call, the super call is actually already setting the crouch flag right here from whether or not this wants to crouch variable is true. So we actually want to change this variable and then the flag will automatically be set, it'll automatically be read, and the crouching will automatically be implemented. So let's do that. Let's go back to here and create a function. Let's create a function called crouch pressed. So there's two sort of ways you can handle crouching. There's toggle crouch and hold. So toggle crouch means that every time you press the crouch button, you will change states from either crouching or standing. Hold means that as long as you're holding the crouch button, you'll be in crouch. As soon as you let go, you'll be standing again. I'm going to choose toggle crouching, but you can do it whichever way you'd like and the implementation should be only slightly different and the reason why i'm choosing toggle is because later down the line i want to implement um sliding and so it's going to be easier to use toggle crouch for that so let's implement this function and we're going to put it here in the input section i did this a little bit off camera last time if you're following along with the series um I organized all of our functions into these regions and this just makes it easier to sort of store away the code uh, and section up into manageable chunks. So here in the input section, we're going to put the definition for crouch pressed and that's going to look like this. So really simple, just changing the value of B wants to crouch and it literally just is a toggle. So this is where the name toggle crouch basically comes from because you're literally just toggling the variable. And yeah, surprisingly enough, that is all you need to get the mechanic sort of in use. And the last thing we're going to need to do just to enable crouching is we're going to need to add a variable to our um, constructor called um, can crouch, but it's actually through the nav agent props. So we're going to go to nav agent props and we're going to say b can crouch equals true. Um, if you don't change this, you won't be able to crouch. So this is just an annoying hiccup that you could find. So anyway, let's jump into the editor and make sure this all works. Okay, so here we are in the editor and all we have to do is some super simple setup on our actual character blueprint class to enable this to work. So if you'll recall, we made that variable on our zippy character movement component called crouch pressed. So now let's just get the C key. And again, just sort of setting this up, um, not necessarily the best way, but mostly for demonstration, sort of like the sprint. And we're going to call the crouch pressed function. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, before we actually run this, I'm going to point out, if we go to see, check out our crouch variables, you can see there's a couple of variables here we can set. So we can change the half height of the capsule when we crouch, and we can change the walk speed 
And we can also tell the CMC whether we want to walk off ledges when we're crouching. And um, here is that variable as we saw before in the constructor that we set, which is just making sure that this is on, otherwise you can't crouch. So let's play this. All right, so you can see when I hit C, I crouch and I turn on the capsule, by the way, here, I turned on the capsule debug. So um, this is what I click when I'm crouched. That's where I'm standing. And you can also see the walk speed taking effect. So when I'm walking here um, versus when I'm crouching, I'm way slowed down. And, um, you know, I can sprint and stuff when I'm not crouched. When I'm crouched, I kind of can't do anything. I can't jump either. I can only jump. Um, but you can notice the problem here right away, which is that when I hit the C key, there's this instant transition. And it's kind of jarring for the camera. It kind of immediately goes down. And the capsule immediately goes down, and this isn't necessarily what we'd want. You know, we like the cr the player to actually smoothly transition into a crouched state and then transition into uncrouched. Um, so there's many ways we could go about fixing this. Um, the first thing you could do is you could actually, you know, slowly transition the capsule to be, you know, from this height to this height. Um, and I'm not going to do that way. There's a number of reasons. One because I'm just going to use the default setup for crouching in the character movement component. And I don't want to go ahead and modify that because to do that, I'm going to need to probably rewrite my own custom walking movement mode. And I would prefer to just use the default movement mode because that's probably what most people want to do for walking. And um, also you could actually end up causing more desyncs by trying to smoothly transition the capsule because um, when your capsule is handling, co handling collisions, if you are trying to change the capsule at all these continuous heights, then you know you might end up having problems where the server had a collision, but the client didn't. Whereas when the capsule can only be one of two heights, there's less room for error. So as you can see, like I'm walking against here, as I hit crouch, I immediately go down through it. Versus if I were trying to like slowly transition, you know there might be an instance where the capsule collider on the client is just small enough to fit through, but the server doesn't, and then you get a kind of jarring desync. And so it's probably better to let the capsule snap, but we'll handle smooth transitions with the camera and the animations to make the appearance that there actually is a kind of transition to the crouching. So, so what we are going to do is we are going to transition the camera. Um, and there's a couple ways you could do that. You know, there's always a million places to put something in Unreal Engine. And I would say that what a lot of people get wrong and what I have a lot of beef with tutorials is that they will often, you know, implement the mechanic correctly, but they will sort of do it in the wrong framework or in the wrong place and not sort of using Unreal Engine's true potential. So, you know, a naive solution might be to simply you know, interpolate the camera position of the camera component on the character. And that would work, but um, it's just not the right place to put it. And you could have problems like now all of a sudden say this is an NPC without a camera, but you're trying to reference a camera component. And uh, it just really isn't the right place to put it because the character actor shouldn't really uh, care about a camera because it's really just only an in-game thing. Um, and besides hosting a camera component, it should really just virtually exist in-game. And the camera is sort of a player aspect, not really a character aspect. So don't worry if that doesn't make complete sense, but basically what I'm trying to say is that where we should put the implementation for this blending is in a class that most people probably don't know about. It's called the Player Camera Manager. So we're going to hop back into the code and derive our own custom class. Okay, so here in the code, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an Unreal class. And uh, unfortunately, there's no template for this, but we'll just start with UObject. We'll call this Zippy Camera Manager. Technically, I should have called it Zippy Player Camera Manager, but um, just to make the name a bit shorter, we'll just do this. And let's put in the correct template here. That looks like this. And the correct body. 
like such, and I've just included a couple headers that we're gonna find useful um, when we're actually implementing the blend. So, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create two variables, and these are going to be the crouch blend duration and crouch blend time. And my implementation is gonna be pretty simple. Basically, we have a blend duration, and um, that's how long it takes the character, the camera to transition from the walking height to the crouching height. And then this crouch blend time is the actual um, value, the time value that we are in the duration. Um, and then we're gonna do all the implementation in one function called update view target. And basically I'm not gonna go into how exactly the camera manager works, but it's a pretty neat class and you should check it out. And basically this function is just going to do all the heavy lifting of figuring out where the camera goes, what the FOV is, etc. And we're just going to modify the final camera state at the very end to adjust that location. So let's go ahead and generate this. And I'm just going to paste in the implementation here. All right, so let's go through this line by line. So the first thing we're doing is we are getting a reference to the zippy character actor. And we're putting this in an if statement because the camera manager is tied to the player controller. So there could be instances where we're actually possessing a different character or a different pawn for that matter. And we don't want to deal with crouching. Like say we're spectating. Um, we don't have a valid zippy character. And so we wouldn't need to modify the camera based on crouch heights because we don't have a pawn that can crouch. So once we get that reference, we're going to get a reference to the our own custom character movement component, which um, if you didn't uh, write this, I think I wrote this uh, off camera, but basically this function here is just going to, um, it's just a simple inline function that just exposes the zippy character movement component. It's just a getter basically. Um, anyway, so we're getting this reference. Then we're going to create these two big vectors. So the X and Y component are zero because we only care about the height when we're doing this crouch offset. And then the Z component is going to be the crouch half, half height, which is something that you set in blueprints, minus the default capsule height. And you kind of got to do this long workaround to get the default capsule height, but you can't just access the zippy character half height um, currently because you know that might be altered um, if you're crouching or not. So that's why we have to do this sort of long mess to get um, the default object of our character. So next, um, we're gonna make this offset vector. And so this is our target crouch offset. This is the actual offset. And this is just going to be a linear interpolation between no offset and the target crouch offset. And the alpha value for this is the crouch blend time divided by crouch blend duration. So pretty standard stuff. Um, and we're going to apply this offset. But before we do that, we also want to adjust the blend time. So as you can see, we're given delta time. So we're going to say that crouch blend time, uh, sorry, if we're crouching, crouch blend time is going to be the blend time plus delta time clamped. And if we're not crouching, we're going to say the blend time minus delta time. So when we are going into a crouch, we are going to go from zero to blend duration. When we're stepping out of a crouch, we're going from blend duration to zero. And that just makes it so that the lerp works correctly. The last thing you might have noticed is this little thing I'm adding here where I'm adjusting the offset by the target crouch offset. This I kind of got from trial and error. Basically, when you immediately crouch, you're actually, that jarring effect you saw where the camera snaps down, that is going, we're kind of negating that with this. And then we're smoothly lerping back to the target crouch offset. So that's what that is basically. Just kind of trust me on that one. Um, then lastly, we actually apply the offset. So if we are moving on the ground, then we're gonna say the out POV, which is that reference struct we got, and we're gonna change the location to be um, plus equals offset. 
And the reason why I check if we're on moving on the ground is I also kind of figured this out from trial and error, but basically the camera doesn't actually change position if you try to crouch mid jump. So yeah, it's just a weird um, byproduct of the default uh, crouch implementation, but yeah, you only want to change this if we're already on the ground. So anyway, let's jump back into the editor and see how this works. All right, so here in the editor, there's just one quick thing that we need to do to make sure that we're actually using the new um, camera manager that we just created. So we need to create our own custom player controller. And I'll just name this uh, third person player controller. And this here, you can see right here, we're going to specify the player camera manager class to be our new zippy camera manager. And that's it. Once we specify that class here, it'll automatically create it and use it appropriately. And we're just going to real quick change the default player controller in our game mode to be the new player controller that we just created. And that should be everything. So now if I press play, you can see when I hit crouch, I get this nice smooth transition between the standing height and the crouching height. And this works in midair. I can crouch and I can do things like you know, just be jumping off edges, crouching, uncrouching from the ground. I can uncrouch and crouch halfway through. And you can see because we're just using that blend time, it will start automatically blending back into the standing height if I change stances. So yeah, um, that's my implementation of crouching in UE5 with the new character movement component. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to cover sliding and we're also going to use more of the stuff that I did from this video in, in the next tutorial. And um, also, if you're wondering, like, you know, obviously the character doesn't appear to be changing when I crouch. And that's kind of a problem. I'm not going to be adding animations yet, but I might do a tutorial where I sort of make a master animation blueprint class that, you know, will combine all the movement stuff we're doing um, to be represented visually, but for now, you know, we're we are going to be changing the actual uh, capsule. We're going to be changing how the player moves, but we're not going to be messing with the animations yet. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for sliding. Uh, see you next video.